I'm so good with nothing from Russia, I will confess, your uh, Korean accent is not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The have and the have not. The way you chose to start off about this mother who was afraid to let her teenage daughter go to school because she had another girl had been found raped, murdered. It it hit you. It really hit you. I mean, where did the story come mm. from? Well, this is actually you know because truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. And this episode was narrated to us by Dr. Muhammad Abdul Khalid. DM analytics. Yeah. Yes, DM analytics, the prince, uh, the chief economist. Yeah. And uh, I thought that that really, you know, will wake people up to the reality of the situation. Yeah, because the the location she's in mm -hmm. is is normally associated with being very prosperous, prosperous very affluent, affluent. Not yes. where you think about when you think about this kind of level of vicious crime. Correct. And it was very sobering. But yeah. the overall fact is, the economic numbers seem to tell us a very different story. Gini coefficient, mm -hmm. which of course. Is talking about inequality has been dropping. Um, you know, GDP numbers are going up, but why don't we feel it? I mean, like we, we've asked this question so many times, but why don't we feel it? So I think you know one major point in this story is that you know we have to look a little bit deeper than the overall poverty uh, figures, the overall GDP, uh, you know, the numbers that uh, that that we see. Yeah. Because all these, uh, you know, these, uh, the whole report is based on official data. It's available from Bank, Bank Nagara, yeah. Department of Statistics. But it is uh, the transparency of the data, or rather the disaggregation of the data that makes all the, this picture so uh, worrisome. Yeah, it's, it's... And then it, the one other thing that sort of made clear was that poverty is already, a, not say a punishment, but mm. it's a harder... When you're in that hole, it's so hard to get out of it. The one thing you pointed out was the highest interest rates, right? The advantage to poor, where people like to buy things on, like, on time, they call it, right? They, they play installments. But what they don't realize is you're paying more for something than the rich guy with the big house, which is so strange, right? When you think about it, they are the ones who can afford it, but they are paying less than you over for like things like, it's not even like big things. It's like refrigerators exactly. and like TVs and all that. I mean, like, the system itself is so broken. You know, the, uh, the irony of the situation is that the uh, interest or the charges for the consumer durables yeah. are the, high, the higher for the uh, cheaper items. So Crazy, that's, right? that's the unfairness of the system. So this is a situation that is ripe for reform. And yeah. uh, this thing has been in the works for quite a long time. And so one of the things that need to be done is to change the law so that this kind of interest rates and charges cannot be levied anymore. The one finding that sort of got me was that between the rich and poor Chinese is actually higher than the rich and poor Malay. Is that because BRIM is working or some of the other methods to bring them up is working or is it just the skew of the data? Mm, I think, you know, this is one of the things that, you know, you have to look at. When you look at the overall data, you see, because, partly because there are so many successful Chinese, so they bring the you know the figures the up. The average up. So then you know the but they are, what this story serves to, to do is to put a little bit of spotlight on the Chinese who are not doing so well, and they add up to quite a number too. So the figure works like this: for the Chinese, it is highest because for every ringgit that a Chinese from the bottom forty earns, uh, those in the top twenty are earning six ringgit. So they're six times uh, wealthier in terms of income. And all of this goes to prove this one particular line in the story struck me more than anything else. It's time for us to stop lying to ourselves, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's time for us to stop looking at the absolute numbers. He yeah. pointed out, it's, you need to look at the relative. Correct. You have to disaggregate the data mm -hmm. and that is, that is you know, the only way you can, you're going to address this issue effectively. Because if you are going to just look at the GDP data, you're going to say, you know, what's the problem? We are growing at, you know, 5% or, or, or more. So the first step is what, do you think? So I think what we need to do is to first acknowledge the magnitude of the problem. And then as uh, Dr. Denison Jayasurya uh, uh, comments, we need a national strategy to address, address this problem. 
haven't the government been doing some kind of these strategies to help like bring up the, the you know the rural poor or everything or is it time to to change the tack of the strategy it's no longer you cannot just give everybody money and hope it works that's so. exactly it. I mean we have been doing the government has been doing quite a bit but as the you know the, the, this uh, description shows us um, there are a lot of people who are not you know uh, doing too well in our society and we ought to be paying more attention to them if we you know uh, acknowledge the problem firstly you know then your strategies to uh, you know uh, address this issue for example uh, Dr. Denison, uh, you know, he recommends a community-based development strategy. Which means what exactly? Which is rather than the, a top-down, you know, planner's way of looking at how to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But you let the community govern themselves, so they, because they can see the issues that they have, they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And, they, and, you know, that uh, provides for a, for a fairer distribution of opportunities and income and, you know, uh, yes. For more on the stories, pick up a copy of The Edge Weekly at all good newsstands.